Awesome. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here. Again, my name is Babette. Welcome. Um, let's get started in a sukhasana. So easy seat, just briefly checking in. You take cross legs over one ankle in front, one ankle in the other, maybe perhaps half lotus, maybe full lotus. So do what feels good. Take a moment to find your sit bones. You might want to walk your sit bones back for a moment. Finding a long spine, you can take the hands onto the knees, palms facing down is a little bit more grounding, palms facing up is a bit more receptive. Feel free to close your eyes for a moment. We won't be here long, but it's just a good opportunity to check in with our bodies, becoming present on the mat. Yes, I know we are here physically, but sometimes we can take a moment or two to really get there mentally. So take a deep inhale through the nose. You can Feel the bottom of the belly, take your time, and then exhale out through the mouth. Let's take that twice more. Deep inhale, don't let me rush you, completely feeling the belly. And then exhaling out through the mouth. Take one more round, deep inhale through the nose. And then sighing out through the mouth. Awesome. And gently opening your eyes, cross your ankles in front, come over the shins and then find the tabletop at the center of your mat. So you can send your shoulders right over the elbow, sorry, over the wrist. <clears throat> and then fanning your fingertips out nice and wide, gripping them into the mat. And just orbit your shoulders over the wrist, just by putting a little bit of pressure onto our joints, they become stronger. So as you circle, it doesn't matter clockwise or counterclockwise. So you continue to evenly press into the fingertips, all 10 of them, as you shift your weight. And then let's orbit the other way around. Keeping the elbows straight, perhaps noticing if you're collapsing in the low belly. So engaging your Uddiyana Bandha, lifting the belly in and upwards. Let's spin your fingertips to the side wall, again keeping the elbows straight, spinning them towards the knees now, and then shift your weight side to side. And here too, as you shift into the right hand, can you continue to press into the left fingertips and vice versa. Awesome. Now Yogi's Choice, you can spin your fingertips towards your knees, or if that's too much, spin them back forwards. And then in either variation, you can shift your heart forwards. On an inhale, exhale, send your butt back. Be very mindful if your fingertips are towards the knees because this will really open up the backs of the wrists. We'll take two more pulsations. Send your heart forward. On the inhale, exhale, shifting your weight back. One more time. Inhale, shift your heart forward. Exhale, shift your weight back. Nice. Now another yogi's choice, keep the fingertips towards the knees if you have them there or spin them forward. And then step the feet back into a plank pose. This is intense, stay with the breath. So I like to imagine creating as much space between the chest and the ground here. Notice if your hips are piking, can you find that beautiful medium between Piking the hips up too high and dipping the hips too low. Nice. One more breath. Press through the heels to the back of your space. And then gently lower the knees onto the mat. If your fingertips are still towards the knees, very carefully spin them back forward. Take a moment. Catch an inhale here. And then keeping the hips over the knees, walk your hands forward into Anahatasana. Puppy pose, her chakra pose, coming onto the forearms. You can come onto your forehead, bowing in, in finding a little bit of a, an arc in the spine, or perhaps you can tuck your chin forward, and drop the chest onto the mat. Notice if your big toes are coming in towards each other, can you spin the shins in such a way that they're like the number 11, parallel. Nice, take one more breath here. Perhaps imagine touching the back of your skull with your tailbone. And then on the inhale, slide forward onto your belly, finding swing, scroll, shoulders over the elbows. Nice, shining your heart forward, soften your glutes. 
And then exhale, bring your forehead onto the mat, tend your fingertips on the outside of your mat and spin the elbows to the ceiling. Make one big fish tail with the legs pointing through the toes. Now inhale, press into the fingertips and rise up into a wide angle cobra pose. Only go up as high as you feel good and then exhale, lowering the forehead back down. Take two more pulsations here. Inhale, press into the fingertips, perhaps lengthen a little bit more through the arms and then exhale, bowing down, the forehead comes down. And one more time, inhale, rising up, mindful of the lower back, soften the glutes, and then exhale, going back down. Inhale, hands underneath the shoulders, and exhale, press back into a child's pose. The last one, you can take your knees nice and wide. And then let the belly be heavy in between the thighs. And slightly... Start to engage, not slightly, you can skip that word. Start to engage your ujjayi breath, that slight friction in the back of the throat. I have a few words ahead of myself. So I like to imagine changing the aperture of my throat here, which will encourage that scraping idea of your inhales and your exhales along the back of your throat. And then on the next inhale, come up to rise onto all fours, finding your tabletop. And catch an inhale here, and exhale, stand your sit bones to the sky, finding your downward facing dog. Pedal up through the feet, take your hands as wide on the mat as feels good. This is just a morning stretch really as we're settling into our down dog. I do, however, want to remind you to check in perhaps with the extremities here, specifically the fingertips. As you crawl them into the mat, you can find a little bit of an arc in the palm of your hand, which will take pressure out of the wrists. And then feel free to keep a royal bend in the knees. Over time, yes, our heels will relax down to the mat, or maybe not in this lifetime. That's not the goal of this pose. This pose is all about the spine, as is actually every other pose in yoga. Let's see if you can find those relaxed knees simply unlocking them which will keep our pelvis unlocked and fluid and therefore so our spine will remain fluid. Awesome. Speaking of the spine, let's warm it up a little bit. Inhale, slowly come high into the tippy toes, roll forward into plank, undulating in the spine, finding a cat spine on your way there, crown the head last and coming forward. And then exhale, soften the knees, pull back through cow spine into your downward facing dog. Twice more, inhale, slowly rippling forward, press the thoracic to the ceiling as you press the earth away. Crown of head is the last thing to come forward. And then exhale, soften the knees, pull back like a water wheel into downward facing dog. One more time, inhale, high into the tippy toes, undulating the spine, coming forward. Exhale, pull back, downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale up through the mouth. Awesome. On the next inhale, let the right leg float, reaching through the toes. Long leg. And then on exhale, take the right knee to the left elbow, cross body plank, shift your heart forward. Inhale, send the right leg back. Down dog split. Exhale, work with the breath. Right knee back into the left elbow, cross body plank, press the earth away. Inhale, send the leg back into the sky, down dog split. One more pulse, exhale, right knee, left elbow, take it across. Inhale, shoot the right leg back out, pointing through the toes. Exhale, bend the knee, and then circle through that right ankle, weakening up that right foot clockwise, counterclockwise. Stay here, so if you really find the biggest turnout you got in the hip here, so you continue to square up the shoulders to the front of your mat, or let the ball of that right foot drip behind the left calf, taking your side plank variation, reach up with the right arm, rock star, so you can let the right fingertips drip, keeping that bottom leg straight, nice, great for the abs, a little bit of a stretch. 
Inhale, reach the right arm up. Exhale, right hand down. Inhale, right leg to the sky. Down dog split. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Take it forward, shift the heart forward. Inhale, send the right leg into the sky. Down dog split. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Take your heart forward. Inhale, down dog split. Right leg to the sky. One more time. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, shoot the leg back up. And then exhale, step the right foot forward in between the hands. Use your hands to get it there if you need to. Come on to tented finger, slow runner lunge. Inhale, shine your heart forward. Send the left heel back. Feeling the back of the front of that back leg opening up. Then exhale, pull the hips back. Modified pyramid pose. Just lengthening through that right leg, pulling the hips back. Nice. On the inhale, bend that right knee, come back into your lowerers lunge, press into that right foot. As on the exhale, you rise up into a standing split with the left leg up. So you can turn the left toes down, finding that internal hip rotation. Nice. Now look down, come on halfway up, a little bit of a flat back. Take tended fingers in front, shine your heart forward on the inhale, and point to the left toe. Exhale, coil the left knee in. Perhaps you can touch your nose or forehead, round in the spine. Inhale, shift the left leg out. Reach forward with the crown of the head, finding a little bit of a flat back. Exhale, coiling in. Samana value, drawing the energy inward. One more time. Inhale, send the leg back out. Shine your heart forward. And then exhale, coil the knee in. Perhaps touch your nose or forehead. Now soften that right knee a little bit so you can look up and then come up to hug the left knee into the chest. Come up to rise, give it a squeeze. Find your center and on exhale, hands to heart center, figure four, the left ankle on top of the right thigh, and a seat, figure four chair. So you can find a little cow spine here to shine your heart forward. Perhaps you can touch your shin with your forearms or stay high. Now comes a tricky transition. Take the hands behind you in your figure four chair and then interlace the fingers. Inhale, lift halfway up with the chest. And then unhook that left leg, send it back into warrior three with your bound hands. So you can really pull the hands back. It will help finding a stable warrior three here. Stay here or perhaps you can melt your chest onto that right thigh, finding toppling tree here. Letting the hands melt down, continue to point through the left toes or really flex the left toes down. One more breath. Gently release the hands down. Exhale, giant step back, low runner's lunge. Anchor through the palms. Inhale, sweep the right leg into the sky, down dog split. Exhale, joining both feet together, downward facing dog. On the inhale, ripple forward into plank, shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, lower onto your knees. Shine your heart forward, bend the elbows back, drop the chest and chin in between the thumbs. Ashtangasana, gorgeous arc in the spine. Inhale, untuck the toes, slide forward onto your belly, low cobra, bhujangasana. And then exhale, pulling back, downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. A little bit of core work. Let's take that on the left. Inhale, let the left leg rise, reaching through the toes. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, take it across, and the heart forward. Inhale, shoot the leg back, reaching through the toes. Exhale, again, left knee, right elbow, press the earth away. Inhale, shoot it back out. One more pulse. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, cross body plank. Inhale, shoot the leg back up. Down dog split. Bend that left knee, open up that hip. Biggest turnout you got. Try not to collapse into the wrist. Come back to crawling the fingertips into the mat. Circle through the left ankle, clockwise. Counterclockwise. Stay here or 
Come onto the tippy toe of the right foot and then drop the ball of that left foot behind the right calf. And sweep the left arm overhead, rock star. Perhaps you want to take your left foot a little bit closer to the right calf. Nice. Inhale, sweep the left arm up. Exhale, left hand comes down. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Down dog split. On an exhale, left knee, left elbow. Shine your heart forward. Inhale, shoot the leg back into the sky. Down dog split. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Take it in. One more time. Inhale, shoot the leg up. Exhale, take it to the elbow. Press the earth away. Inhale, shoot the leg back up. And then exhale, stepping the foot forward in between the hands. Take your time to get it there. Come on to tented fingers. Low runner's lunge. Inhale, shine your heart forward as you send that right heel back. Feel the opening in the right hip flexor and quad. Exhale, pull the hips back, lengthen through the left leg. Modify pyramid pose. Stay on the ball of the back foot. Feel free to keep a bend in that right, sorry, left knee. Nice. Inhale, bend that left knee, come back into your low runner's lunge. Press into the left foot and exhale, come up to rise into your standing split. Let the crown of the head drip down. Turning the right toes down, right kneecap down, internal hip rotation. Come halfway up here, come onto tented fingers, find an inhale. Exhale, pull the right knee into the nose or forehead, rounding in the spine. Inhale, send the right leg back out, shine your heart forward. Two more pulses. Exhale, taking the knee in. Inhale, radiating all directions, send that right leg back. One more time. Exhale, taking the knee in, bowing in. Now come halfway up, soften that left knee, and then just looking forward and up, hugging that right knee into the chest, find the long spine, anchoring your tailbone down. Release the knee, take the hands to heart center, figure four, the right ankle on top of the left thigh, have a seat, figure four chair. So find a drishti, single point of focus. Come back to your ujjayi breath. That's all you really need here. And then circle the hands back behind you, interlace the fingers. Inhale, pull the hands back, lift halfway up, and then unhook that right ankle, sand it back into your warrior three with your bound hands. Fight for it. You have to tuck the foot down. Welcome to life. Yet, we try again. Stay here in your warrior three variation or slowly so you can melt that left thigh closer to the upper body. Toppling tree, fight for it. And then slowly release the hands down. Exhale, giant step back, low runner's lunge. Anchor through the palms. Inhale, left leg to the sky, down dog split. Exhale, drawing both feet together, downward facing dog. Inhale, we're going forward into plank, shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, lower the knees down, drop the chest and chin forward in between the thumbs, Ashtangasana. Inhale, untuck the toes, slide forward, low cobra, perhaps lengthen through the elbows. High cobra, Bhujangasana. And then exhale, pulling back, downward facing dog, take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And then gently you can lower onto the shins, have a seat in Vajrasana, or take Balasana, child's pose, knees nice and wide. Take a moment to catch your breath, have a sip of water, and then we'll keep it flowing. Take one more breath here. Feel free to sigh out through the mouth. Awesome. Come back onto all fours, tabletop. Exhale, press back. Now we're facing dog. On the next inhale, bring your big toes to touch, feet slightly forward. Inhale, send the shoulders over the wrist, wriggling forward. Exhale, squat back, look forward, find a drishti, the bottom of your exhale, 
your journey to the front of the mat. You can step forward or hop forward. Inhale as you land halfway up. Exhale for full Uttanasana, crown of the head dripping down. Inhale, anchor through the feet, rise all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Inhale, circle the arm, hands up, Urdhva Hastasana, make the ribs and anchor the tailbone. Exhale, diving it down, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, take a flat back, come on to the fingers, your hands on the shins. Exhale, hands down, step back into plank pose. Inhale in your plank. Exhale, shift your shoulders over the wrists, bend the elbows back, chaturanga, shave your rib cage. Inhale, upward facing dog. Flipping onto the tops of the feet, rolling over the toes. Exhale, pulling back, downward facing dog. Three breaths. So check back in with the hands. Can you really claw them into the mat? And send some weight back into the legs. Letting the hips really just be the center of gravity here. I have a teacher and he says, all you need in downward facing dog is to press the front of the mat away from you. That Uriyana Bandha lifting your belly in and upwards. Send your sit bones to the sky and the rest is just along for the ride. Nice. Inhale, big toes to touch, feet slightly forward. Bring the shoulders over the wrist. Exhale, squat back like a slingshot. Bottom of your exhale, step up or float to your drishti at the front of the mat. Inhale, lift it halfway as you land. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center. Tadasana. Let's keep it flowing. Inhale, reach the arms up. Look at your thumbs, sideways stretch. Exhale, bowing in, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, yogi's choice. You can step back into plank, lower into chaturanga, slowly building strength. Or if you know how to hop back, land with bent elbows. Shine your heart forward as you sweep your legs back. Inhale, rising up, upward facing dog. Exhale, pulling it back, downward facing dog. Now, I'm a big fan of some L-shaped tops as I incorporate them into my Surya Namaskar A. So you're more than welcome just to stay in your down dog for a few breaths. If you're working on inversion or getting over the fear of inversions, the L-shaped tops are a fantastic place to begin. They've helped me a lot. So let's have a look at them or hop off the train anytime you wish. Feet slightly forward, big toes touch. On the inhale, let the left leg rise. Come high into the tippy toe of the right foot. And then shine your heart down as you look in between the thumbs. You can stay here bending and lengthening through that right leg as you build strength. We're at the bottom of your exhale. Take an L-shaped hop, keeping the arms straight. Make it playful, no expectations. Come up on the bottom of your exhale, then nice and lightly. That's where we build strength. And then stepping the feet forward. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, reset the spine, exhale, double tap, face to shins, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up, Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Let's take one more round. Inhale, sweep the arms up, reaching up. Exhale, bending it down, long spine, take your time to get there. Inhale, flat back, prepare. Exhale, your journey back. Feel free to step back into plank, slowly lower into chaturanga, or take your hop back. Landing with bent elbows. Inhale, rising up. So you're coming out of water. Strong here, try not to collapse into the pinky side edges of your hands. And then exhale, Anamukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Nice. Yeah, I used to have this 
love-hate relationships with the L-shaped hops. But then there was a day when I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try them without expecting anything. Just gonna have some fun. Because they are really happy hoppings. So let's give it a go. Big toes to touch, feet slightly forward. Otherwise, just stay in downward facing dog for a few breaths. Inhale, let the right leg rise. Come high into the tippy toes of the left foot. Look in between the index fingers and thumbs. Stay here, bending and lengthening that left leg. You never have to leave the ground, yet you are preparing already for the hops. Or at the bottom of your exhale, try to come up, L-shaped hop. Work on really keeping the elbows straight. You can send your hips a lot further back than you may think. Let's give it one more go. And then stepping the feet forward, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Let's double tap. Exhale, face the shins. Inhale, coming all the way up, Urdhvahastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Now take your feet about as wide as the mat, and then just lowering down into Malasana, yogic squat, that's rubber rest. So there comes a point I can get a little tired in my practice, but the beautiful thing about that is, is I have less energy to resist here. So taking the elbows on the inside of the knees, hands to heart center, and it's really nice to close the eyes here for a few breaths. By turning the gaze inwards, I find it personally a little bit easier to tune in, check in with where I'm holding. And I say this in basically every class that I teach. It's this idea of releasing everything below the waistline. So perhaps imagine the pelvic bowl just anchoring down to the ground. And everything above your waistline is lengthening, elongating, getting super long, reaching through the crown of the head to the ceiling. And then lastly, checking in if you're collapsing into the big toe side of the feet. Use your elbows to press the knees away so they stay over the big toes. And then exhale, hands down, turn the heels out. Take a brief semi-wide forward fold here. You can grab opposite elbows, sway side to side, right going over the legs. Now yogi's choice. Your journey back into down dog, you could take a vinyasa or just step back into down dog or take crow pose on your way there or just the preparation for it. Take the feet underneath the hips, tend the fingers about a foot and a half in front of you, come high into the tippy toes, bend the knees, send them out about a 45 degree angle so you can land your torso onto the thighs. Then scroll your hands back so you can scoop the kneecaps with the armpits. Claw the hands into the mat, stay here. This is great for the core. Or look forward, don't look down. Look forward, about a foot and a half, two feet. And then land the shins onto the back of the triceps as you take your chatter on the arms so you can stay here. Or slowly work with pulling one heel or both heels into the seat. So this is where you really claw your hands into the mat. Coil on the core, look forward, don't look down. One more breath. And then taking it back, you can take a vinyasa or meet us in down dog. And then we'll rest either in balasana, child's pose, or vajrasana. Take a breath in. And exhaling out, taking your rest pose of your choice. At this point in the practice, I like vajrasana, sitting on the shins. This way, the oxygen reaches the brain a little bit quicker so that we are ready to flow just a little bit quicker. Nice. I hope you're nice and warm at this point so you can really enjoy this last standing series. Take one more breath, have another sip of water and then we'll keep it flowing. Awesome. On the next inhale Find your tabletop, and then exhale, press back into your downward facing dog. 
feel nice and open already in the shoulders. Nice. On an next inhale, let the right leg rise, reaching through the toes. Exhale, step the foot forward in between the hands. Take your time to get it there. And lower the left knee down on top of the toes. Inhale, sweep the arms up, interlacing your last three fingers, Kali Mudra. And then take a moment to lift the upper body out of the lower body. Find that lift behind the heart, sternum to the ceiling. And then reaching through straight arms. And it's nice to really drive that right shin forward to press into the top of that back foot to help facilitate the opening of the front of that trailing leg. Nice. One more breath here. Soft jaw. Exhale, release the hands down, frame your front foot, tuck the left toe, slow runner's lunge, anchor through the left hand, inhale, reach up with the right arm, spinal twist. Notice if you're collapsing in that left wrist and shoulder, and if that right hip is coming up, can you roll that right hip under, let the left hip rise a little bit. Catch an inhale here, and then on exhale, turn all your ten toes to the right to should reach back with the right hand for a little hip dip here. You can pulsate, but yet stay strong in that left wrist. Or you can stay up a little bit. So your bottom leg is in like a side plank, and your front leg is in like a twisted low lunge. Now on the inhale, turn all the way to your left. Keep on turning, turning to the left. And then bend the left knee, take skandhasana to the back of your mat. You can stay up a little bit higher, or perhaps lower, nice and low, breathing into the hips here. Nice. Same idea as malasana, long spine. Nice. I bet your jaw is super relaxed. Nice. On the inhale, side angle over the right leg to the front of your mat. Take the right hand on the inside of the right foot. Anchor your back heel down 90 degree. Reach up with the left arm, finding your side angle. That's not working. Inhale, reaching up. If this is too much, you can take your forearm onto your thigh for your classic Parva Konasana. Otherwise, take that right hand on the inside of the right foot. And rolling that right hip underneath you. And press into the pinky that edge of that left foot. Strong in the core and front thigh. Inhale, come up warrior two so you can stay committed to the lunge and then inhale flip the front palm reach forward reach back take your reverse warrior parashagra keep driving that right shin forward and then exhale lengthen through the right leg reach forward with the right arm take trikonasana triangle pose take the right hand on the inside of that right shin or perhaps if you can come all the way down you want to try placing it on the outside there's a tendency to roll that left shoulder in in order to get the hand on the bottom of the ground. So you can lift that right shoulder, sorry, left shoulder back. That means you have to lift up a little bit. That's totally fine. Nice. Exhale, left hand comes down. Turn the right toes into the left wide forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up as you turn the heels in, taking your high goddess legs. Keep the knees over the ankles and then rise up into your high back squat. Let's take a right arm over left eagle wrap, so you can wrap the wrist as well, otherwise bring the backs of the hands to touch. Sit low in your squat, inhale, lift the elbows a little bit, a little bit of a back bend, and then exhale, taking the hands down, perhaps you can touch the ground with your right pinky finger. Inhale, stay low on the hips, come back up. Take a little bit of a back bend with the elbows. Exhale, taking it down, keep the hips low. One more time, inhale, coming up, opening in the hips and shoulders. Exhale, hands come down. Uncoil the arms, send the heels out, wide forward fold. Inhale, take a halfway lift, and exhale, take a low runner's lunge over your left leg to the back of your mat. Inhale, stay committed to the lunge. If you can, come up high, crescent lunge. So you're driving your left chin forward, right heel back. Slightly knit the ribs in, anchor the tailbone down. Catch an inhale here. Exhale, T-twist to your left. Flex the wrists. Keep the heart over the hips. You keep driving that left chin forward. 
flip the front palm, reach forward, reach back, perhaps take that left hand on the outside of the right thigh, and then exhale, take your right elbow to the outside of the left thigh, then take hands in prayer for your bow, sorry, revolved, Anjani Asana, Paravita, Anjani Asana, nice, roll that left shoulder back, continue to press that right heel back, Try not to collapse too much on that left thigh. Send the breath to back of the heart space. Nice. Take the left hand onto the hip. Reach the right hand down about a half a foot in front of you. Catch an inhale here and exhale. Send yourself onto the left leg. Let the right leg rise. Turn the right toes in. Now stay here, keeping your gaze down or reach up with the left arm as you look up for your revolved half moon pose, your Parvita Arachandrasana, super challenging pose. Especially if you look up, lift from the belly of the hamstring, so the right in the middle of that right hamstring. One more breath. Then an exhale, left hand down, and you're back into your supported warrior three. Inhale, soften the left knee so we can come up all the way, rising up, hugging the right knee into the chest. Find that superhero in your heart. Soften the left knee. Now wrap the right leg over the left leg. Perhaps you can take the right foot behind the left calf. Expand your wings out to the sides. And then exhale, left arm over right. Eagle wrap. Stay high as so you can lift the elbows, about as high as the shoulder, super strong drishti, or perhaps coiling in. Samana Vayu, trace your drishti as you come down. One more breath. Inhale, fight for it, come back up. Uncoil the arms. And then as you uncoil the right leg, send it back, reach down with the left arm, and open up into your half moon pose. Ardha Chandrasana. Reaching for the ceiling, find that lift in the upper body. Strong in the right inner thigh, buoyant in the left thigh. Perhaps take the left hand to your heart. One more breath. And then exhale, giant step back into warrior two. Land softly if you can. Flip the front palm, reach forward. And then bring both palms to touch overhead as you lengthen through the left leg and then turn the left toes in, flying warrior. Exhale, bring the hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Inhale, pull the hands down, open up your heart to the sky. Exhale, take a flat back, don't skip it. Inhale in the flat back, crown the head away from the tailbone. And then exhale, bowing forward. Prasarita, Padottanasana, see. Shift some weight back into the balls of your feet and perhaps bring the palms of your hands to touch. And then exhale, gently release the hands down, relaxing your wide forward fold. Or if the crown of the head comes onto the mat and you have a Shirshasana beat practice, line up the fingertips with the big toes. Unilateral triangle between the head and hands, come high into the tippy toes. I'm going to let the feet float. You're more than welcome to take the shins onto the triceps first. And then slowly extend the legs up into the ceiling. Or just relaxing your right forward fold. Continue to shift the weight into the balls of your feet. You feel the opening in the backs of the legs. If you're up, V out the legs, flex the feet. And slowly coming down, lunar landing. Everybody take a halfway lift here. On the inhale, exhale, turn over your right leg to the front of your mat, low runner's lunge. And then on the inhale, step that left foot forward, forward fold, exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhale, sweep the arms up, bend the knees, take Utkatasana. And exhale, hands to heart center, twist to your right. Take a twisted chair here, take a moment to find your hand placement, rolling that right shoulder back. Check what's happening with the left knee. Can you pop that baby back if it came forward? And then you can stay here or take your hands down to the right. 
pop into the balls of the feet and take the hands underneath the shoulders. You can stay here if you're working with your side crow, line up the triceps with the outside edge of the right thigh. Look forward, come high into the tippy toes. You can land the thigh onto the triceps and then look to your side. Stay inside crow or scissor out the legs, taking your kundanyasana one. Stay with the breath. And then slowly feet down, take a forward fold over the legs. Inhale, halfway up, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, coming all the way up, Urva Hastasana. Exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana. Half a body to go, inhale, reach up. Exhale, diving down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up, lift. Exhale, step back with the plank. You can also hop back. Take your vinyasa, chaturanga, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, let's dance. Different conversation on the left. Inhale, let the left leg rise, reaching through the toes. Exhale, step the foot forward in between the hands. Lower to the right knee on top of the toes. Inhale, sweep the arms up, interlacing the last three fingers, Kali Mudra, finding your Anjani Asana, moving in the front of the body. I really care about no pinching in the lower back, so find that lift first, and then drive the shin forward, pressing to the top of that back foot. Exhale, release the hands down, tuck the right toes, lengthen through the right leg. Anchor through the right palm, and inhale, reach up with the left hand, spinal twist. Again, checking in. Try not to collapse. Try not to let that right hip rise too much. Now exhale, turn all your ten toes to the left. Reach back with the left hand, taking your hip dip here. You can take a pulse or two. Or just breathing here into that hip opening on the left. Nice. Stay open in the heart center. Inhale, turn all the way to your right shoulder and then all the way towards your right foot to the back of your mat, bend the knee on the right leg, take Skandasana. Stay high, we'll come a little bit lower, perhaps flex the right, sorry, left toes towards you. Nice, soft job. Inhale, side angle over the left leg. Take the left hand on the inside of the left foot, anchor through the back heel, reach up with the right arm or take the forearm onto the thigh and reach the right arm over your ear. Otherwise, take the hand down, keep driving that left chin forward as you press into the pinky side edge of that back foot. Inhale, strong in the core, come up into warrior two, stay low, committed to the lunge. Flip the front palm, reach forward, reach back, inhale, painting the sky overhead in your reverse warrior parshwadira. And exhale, lengthen through the left leg, reach forward, pull the hips back. Trikonasana, triangle pose. Rolling that right shoulder back. As you anchor your tailbone to the trailing heel. Nice. Exhale, right hand comes down. Turn the left toes in, wide forward, fold to the right. Inhale, halfway up, turn the heels in. High goddess legs, knees over the ankles. Come up to rise, and then let's take eagle wrap, left over right, wrapping the elbows, perhaps the wrists, stay low in the hips. Inhale, lift the elbows up, lift with the back bend. Exhale, let the pinky fingers come down. Inhale, keep the hips low, rise up, finding a little bit of a back bend if you can. Exhale, bowing down. We'll take one more pulse. Inhale, coming up. Strong in the hips. Exhale, again bowing down. Uncoil the arms. Inhale, spin the heels out. Wide forward fold. On your next inhale, turn over your right leg to the back of the mat, low runner's lunge. Catch an exhale here. Inhale, rise up high, crescent lunge. It's an opposite of dynamics, so sending the right shin forward, press the left heel back. Nice, knit the ribs in, open heart. Exhale, T-twist to your right, flex the wrist, 
Try not to lean your weight too much forward. Keep the heart right over the hips. Inhale, flip the front palm, reach forward, reaching back. Take that right hand perhaps on the outside of the left thigh to keep driving that right shin forward. Exhale, left elbow to the outside of that right thigh, taking your hands to heart center for your Paravita Anudhanyasana, your twisted lunge. Keep driving that left heel back. As you roll that right shoulder back, so your breath is compromised here, no joke, send it to the low rib cage in the back or behind the heart. One more breath. Take the right hand onto the right hip, slowly lower the left hand down in front, come on tented fingers, and then exhale, send yourself onto that right leg, let the left leg float. Turn the toes down. You can stay here or slowly send that right arm to the sky. Turn your gaze up if you can. If you want to challenge yourself. Really finding that lift here too. So reach for the ceiling and then imagine as if you're holding on to something from the ceiling instead of leaning on something below you. One more breath. And then exhale, right hand down, you are supported for your three now. And on exhale, coil the left knee in, come up to right, hug the left knee into the chest. We're almost there, yogis. Now the higher you wrap that left thigh over the right thigh, the more of a possibility there is that you can wrap the left foot behind the right calf. And then have a seat, expand your wings out to the side. Now take right arm over left, eagle wrap. Stay here, lift the elbow, strong drishti, single point of focus, or perhaps coiling in. Drawing all that energy inward, which is called samana vayu. Nice. Inhale, fight for it, come back up. Uncoil the arms, and then exhale, unravel that left leg, send it back, reach down with the right hand, opening up into your half moon pose, which is the opposite, your radiant direction, energy in all directions, which is your Viana Vayu, which means energy in all directions. <laughs> so stay light in the right fingertips, so light, so much faith in the strength of your upper body. Perhaps you can lift that right hand to your heart, fight for it, stay with the breath, and then exhale, try and step back into your warrior two. Have a seat. You can land nice and softly. Flip the front palm, reach forward. Then reach both hands overhead to touch the palms. Lengthen through the right leg, turn the right toes in. Exhale, circle the hands behind you. Interlace the fingers. Inhale, pull the hands down, chest to the sky. Look at the back bend. Exhale, take a flat back first. Inhale on your flat back, send the crown of the head away from the tailbone. Exhale, bowing down, finding your prasarita, parajanasana, see, yet again, nice. And then gently relax the hands down. Now from here, you can relax in your wide forward fold, or walk your hands in between the legs away from you. Come on tented fingers, so you can pull your crown of the head closer to the mat. You can stay here, and if you try to shift some weight back into the balls of your feet, you really feel the backs of the legs. Or if you like, you have a strong headstand practice. From here, you can come, also come upside down, come onto the tippy toes, and then let the feet float. This looks super technical, but actually it's very stable because the triangle is a lot wider than the regular Shirshasana B tripod. Nice, one more breath. If you're upside down, V out the legs, flex the feet. Slowly come down, lunar landing. Everybody come halfway up. Exhale, turn over your left leg, low runners lunge to the front of your mat. And then step the right foot forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up, bend the knees, Uttanasana. Exhale, hands to heart center, twist to your left. Take your twisted chair here. Take a moment to really lower the seat. 
Deep down, what's happening with the right knee? If we keep the knees aligned, we keep our hips level, and then we get the most out of our twist. So it's all connected. Stay here. This is very challenging for a few breaths. Or take the hands to your left, or come to face you. Come to the balls of the feet. Stay here nice and tall, facilitating the twist or anchor through the palms, line up the triceps with the outer edge of the left thigh. Then look forward, lift onto the tippy toes, and then shins, and then left shin, sorry, thigh onto the triceps. Taking your Parjabhakasana, perhaps scissoring out the legs. Kunanyasana, one, grip into the fingertips. Last party pose, and the feet down, take a forward fold. Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. And then take a flat back. Stepping back, you can take a vinyasa, last one. Or meet us in downward facing dog. Take your time. Awesome. On the next inhale, rippling forward into plank. Exhale, lower into the shins. Let's have a seat. Let's take the soles of your feet together for Baddha Konasana. I like to take my hands behind me, send my hips a little bit closer to the feet. You can make a strap with your hands and then cup the pinky edges of your feet or take yogi toe lock first two fingers to the big toes. Find a long spine and then exhale, bowing forward. Now I like to really work with this wave-like sensation. Inhale, find length and space. And exhale, bowing in. So try to stay as long in the lower back, lumbar spine as you can without rounding. And then when you've reached your edge, then it's nice to round down in the thoracic and cervical spine. But the more space we create between the vertebra, length that is, in the lumbar spine, the less of a possibility there is to pinch. You definitely want no pinching. And then when you've reached your edge, it's nice to chillax there, or perhaps when you start to get comfortable, take another inhale, find length to create space between the tailbone and the crown of the head, and then exhale, perhaps finding more depth. Let's take one more deep breath here. Perhaps shifting your boundary a little bit more. And inhale, come all the way up, slowly rising up. And then let's cradle the right shin. You can lift the right leg, hold onto the right foot with the left hand, right knee with the right hand. You can shift it side to side, try not to round in the spine. Perhaps you want to take that foot in the elbow crease of the left hand. And then cradle the shin here like a baby. You can rock here, opening up the right hip if you like. Or let's have a look at elephant trunk pose. Very fun, balance, great for the core. You can hop off the train anywhere you like. Take the left hand to the left heel, right hand onto the right calf. Then work that right leg over the right shin. Really engage your inner right leg in order to keep it there. Now take the right hand down, lengthen through the left leg, pointing through the toe. Take the left hand down, about like in front of you. And then the key here is point to the toes, shift your weight forward and see so you can press up. Point to the toes, lift, super strong in the core. One more breath and slowly lowering down. If you like, you can keep the right foot there and then anchor. Hook the left ankle on top of the right ankle. Look forward, shift your weight forward as you shoot the legs to the side. Take Ashta Prakrasana, point through the toes. Lift in the chest and then lower into the seat. You can shake out the legs. Let's take that on the left. You can bend the right knee, taking the leg in front. Hold on to the left shin. And cradle the leg here, hold on to the left heel with the right foot, or perhaps take the foot into the elbow crease, and just give it a hug. Stay here nice and tall, this is perfect. 
or take it further. I like to take the left heel into the right hand, left hand on the right calf, sorry, left calf, and help that leg over the left shoulder. And squeeze that left leg onto the left shoulder by engagement. Take the left hand down, lengthen through the right leg, place the right hand down. Stay here, pointing through the toes. Shift your weight forward, press into the hands, lift up, reach through the toes. Nice, super strong core. And then slowly lower down. You can lower the left foot down, we'll keep it where it is, or reset. Take the right ankle over the left ankle. And then the key here is you shift your weight forward, then send the legs to the side, to the left, as you bend the elbows back. And that all happens simultaneously. <laughs> Press into the fingertips, point from the toes, and then slowly lower down. Have a seat, find the center of your mat. Slowly roll down onto your back. Hug the knees into the chest. Circle the knees over the sacrum. Clockwise, counterclockwise. Nice. Wrapping things up with the back bend of your choice. The spine is properly prepared. So if you're a little tired, feel free to take Sage Bandhasana, bridge pose, hands by your side, lifting your hips up. You can interlace the hands underneath you. And press into the big toe mat of both feet to your thighs. Continue to internally rotate. Don't let the knees splay out. You can stay here or take the hands beside your ears, fingertips towards the feet. Press into the hands and the feet. Now rise up in your Urva Dandarasana, Veal Pose. And so you can walk your feet a little bit away from you and then lengthen through the legs a little bit. So you can send your chest in between the elbows, straight arms. Here too, back bend comes from behind the heart. Long, relaxed, lumbar spine, engage the core to support the lower back. One more breath wherever you are, then slowly tuck the chin, slowly lowering down, vertebra by vertebra. One windshield wiper the legs, side to side, leaving the lower back a moment to adjust. And to counter that, hug the knees in. You can stay here for a moment and relax, or if you have plow pose or shoulder stand in your practice, feel free to take any variation or take both. Your form plow pose can take the hands on your lower back and let the legs rise, stacking the ankles over the knees, knees over the hips, hips over the heart. Feel free to close the eyes as you really spin the toes to the ceiling or press your heels to the back of your space if you're still in plow. One more breath. Slowly bending the knees. You can take plow pose on your way back if you're coming from shoulder stand. And slowly rolling down, vertebra by vertebra. You can extend your legs all the way out. Let the feet turn out. You can take one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, or hands by your side, palms facing up. And letting the eyes close in your final resting pose of today's practice, Shavasana. So letting the breath drift away from you. You won't be here extremely long. This is just a moment where you can enjoy the energy circulating in your body. Everything that you harvest it, you can now cultivate. No, everything that you cultivate it, you can now harvest. That's what I meant. <laughs> Soften the space between the shoulder blades. I tend to hold tension there in Shavasana. Let that melt into the mat. Really relax the glutes that will help release the lower back. Letting the feet turn out, which will relax the legs. 
and soften the shoulders. Let that move into relaxed arms. Let the fingertips curl in if your hands are by your side. Long neck, soft back of the head. Open top of the head, crown chakra, shahashraha. Releasing the space between the eyebrows. Notice if you're frowning. And relax the skin around your eyes and ears, the cheeks, the lips. Let the tongue be heavy in the mouth. No tension, soft jaw. And bring your attention to your throat center. Maybe envision a bright white light there. Let it drip into the heart center. And then let it expand in all directions to the sideways, to the back of the heart as well. And with the next inhale that comes around, take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And gently hug the knees back into the chest. Give yourself a hug. Now roll onto your right side. Take a moment, shifting from our corpse pose into our fetal position. And we've died a little death, leaving anything and all behind on the mat that no longer serves. Ready to come up to rise anew. And come up to sit, finding a comfortable seated position, keeping the eyes closed for one more moment, taking this opportunity to bow to your inner teacher, your inner guru, the absolute most important one of all, thanking you for showing up, doing the hard work. Now feel free to join me in the closing only if you like. Deep inhale through the nose. Oh. to your third eye, the inner light in me recognizes and honors the inner light in you. Namaste. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. So good to